Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about hole tanking and some issues I've been noticing and interacting with uh, just in general from the past few patches uh, especially since the resistance nerf hole tanking has been kind of getting buffed and growing at uh, a steady pace here and kind of just something I want to talk about and address because you know for me for one I, I fly hole tanks a lot of my battleships and uh, you know, I'm kind of tired of flying hull tanks, and I'm also tired of fighting hull tanks. <laughs> um, I'd like to see more diversity in fitting choices rather than just slapping bulkheads on something and having more EHP than an armor fit or a shield fit. Uh, even like going back to my old videos, like the uh, my Navy Raven, you know, it I used to have that as a shield fit, but then when I switched to a hull tank, I gained like 10, 15,000 more EHP and had a lot more utility out of it so this isn't coming from me wanting to you know nerf what other people are doing because i use the same thing it's just i'm tired of fighting against it and it seems with every patch that's come out whole tanks just keep getting stronger and stronger because not only did we did the resistance patch nerf armor and shield tanks whole tanks didn't get any resistance changes but then on top of that you had the battleships gaining a plus 10 percent raw HP so that also included a 10 percent bonus to hull tanks so again you kinda got buffed on two sides for hull tanks in the last patch because not only did they did other tanks get weaker hull tanks got even more uh, hit points on top of that so just wanted to kinda talk about a few ships that are really kind of uh, abusing it um, and, and just ways that we want to make this better to m make other uh, tank types viable. So the first one we're going to talk about here, which I'm pretty sure most everyone is familiar with, is going to be the Brudix Navy issue. We can see that, uh, you know, I'm just kind of have some examples thrown up here, but with a pretty standard and cheap fit Brudix Navy issue, you can get up to 207,000 EHP. For reference, most T1 battleships, if you armor fit them or shield buffer tank them, struggle to reach 100,000 EHP. And obviously with a armor tank battleship, especially if it's buffer fit, you're not going anywhere fast. Um, whereas in the Brutix Navy issue, we're still able to go, you know, 13, you know, 1400 meters a second cold. Um, now, one thing a lot of people will mention is, you know, hey, you put bulkheads on, you reduce your agility. Well, in the case of the Brutix Navy issue, it can completely negate that with a skirmish command burst using evasive maneuvers. So, a standard non hull tank Brutix without any nanos aligns in about 9.9 .9 seconds. With max bulkhead fit Brutix Navy issue without your evasive maneuvers enabled, you align 11.4. Once you turn evasive maneuvers on, you're at 10.1 seconds. So you're, you're gaining a whole 0.2 align time, which is negligible, doesn't even matter. Um, and going back to like the battleship example, we're looking at, again, uh, maybe 100,000 HP battleship, and it maybe can go 1,000, maybe 1,100 meters a second. And the Brutix Navy issue is already at 1300 or 1400 meters a second here. So, you know, you heat it, we're at almost 2000 meters a second. So you have a 2000 meters a second, basically a ram ship coming at you with 207,000 EHP. On its own, this Brutix Navy issue is really not that scary. Um, you put some newts on it, you keep it capped out, you kill it, it just takes forever. You know, probably around three minutes if you've got about a thousand DPS. Um, the issue that I'm running across with these, if anyone remembers the old um, regen Tengus, the ones that had the extra large shield booster that were completely cap stable and they basically had you know like a 4,000 or 5,000 DPS tank, they were just meant to tackle you and there's nothing you could ever do about it, you couldn't kill them. That's kind of how I, f I view Brutix, Brutix Navy issues when they're whole fit, because all they do is they just ram you, tackle you, and there's nothing you can do about it, because then their blob is going to warp on top of you, 
because again these are very rarely these are never alone and they're just going to dog pile you and there's nothing you can do with getting this brutix off of you or killing it in time to avoid that gain um, now this is the most common example but one thing that we could run across in the future is something like this where you drop a little bit of tank but by a little bit you're still at 164,000 EHP which is still quite easily in battleship territory and you gain you gain a second skirmish command burst so now you go with a rapid deployment evasive maneuvers so now you're faster and in this case I've thrown on mid-grade snakes fairly cheap investment for most people out there and now we're looking at 1800 meters a second cold well 1900 meters a second cold and then heated you have 26 you know 2650 meters a second um, coming at you with 164,000 EHP you know again like if this was sitting on a gate and you had warped in or jumped through a gate and this was sitting there this would tackle you and there's nothing you can really do about it unless if you're in a very fast uh, ship that can align or fast in general that's faster than 2600 meters a second and faster than this align time so this is just kind of how things can propagate if you know we we don't really look at these or address these issues and one of the main issues I see with hull tanking is one obviously it's really easy to fit and that you get a ton of EHP out of it it's the fact that none of the this tank it doesn't stack in any way now for buffer armor mods or buffer tank mods um, like plates extenders rigs none of those stack however with shield resistances and armor resistance mods those do stack so for other tank types they have stacking penalties whereas hull tanking does not have any stacking penalties at all whether it's through the bulkheads uh, or the bulkhead rigs or the bulkhead lows there are no stacking penalties and then you're only using one damage uh, or one resistance mod which is your damage control and again it stacks with nothing because you don't have to add any more damage or any more um, resistance mods so since you can't add stacking penalties to your resistance mods the stacking penalty should be included in the bulkheads and again you know something or one thing that a lot of people say is well you should be able to get a lot of EHP out of it because they can't be repaired or they can't be active repaired which I think is really irrelevant in how these are being used you're not bringing out a bunch of hull tanking ships in a fleet fight they're used as response and they're used to hard tackle things or act as bait to where there's just you can't kill them in time by the time the the reinforcements appear and once that happens normally how the the situation goes is let's say there's like this bait B and I sitting somewhere so you go and tackle it try and kill it with you know a small gang it's, you're not gonna have enough time to kill it the blob shows up they push you off of it he warps off to a citadel he repairs he comes back he's full health again so it, again in, in these situations it really doesn't matter that you can't rep them because they're able to disengage and rep on their own with no issues um, it's it's rare that you can actually get one of these fully tackled and kill them before the blob arrives so now kinda with that out of the way the other thing I wanted to compare with whole tanks in this example is uh, again going quickly back over the EHP numbers so this in this example with just a simple 5% mechanic implant you're at 207,000 if you remove the implant you're at 199,000 um, just as an example of let's say we wanted to do an armor setup what does it take on an armor setup to get near those values so here's an example of an armor fit you know I haven't completely pimped this thing out but there's a little bit of pimp through the the plate and the two uh, energized adaptive nanomembranes and then I just for the sake of it to just to see if I could try and get these numbers up I put in two membranes or armor layering membranes to increase the raw uh, HP values 
Uh, you could maybe, you know, go with specific hardeners here. Maybe that'll help a little bit. But again, we're still significantly lower than a whole tanked Brutix Navy issue. We're at 132,000, and that's with command bursts, armor command bursts. Without armor command bursts, you're at 125,000 EHP. Um, so, you know, and then on top of that, you're dealing with the penalties from fitting armor. So, one, you had a downgrade from neutron blasters, ion blasters, and two, uh, were considerably slower. We're at, you know, 1120 meters a second. Um, you could get that faster by using a skirmish link, but then again, your, your, your EHP goes down. So, you know, there's a lot of compromises there with using an armor fit, and again, you know, this is not the greatest example. Very few people are going to run a, a plate blaster Brutix Navy. You might see this more if these were changed into rail guns for like a fleet setup or something like that. But again, you'd have to do more massaging because rail guns would struggle to fit with how it's fit right now. Um, but, you know, you get a lot of those uh, negatives with armor tanking that you just don't get with hull tanking. And on top of that, it's even more expensive because like these T2 Trimark are are not quite so cheap compared to the T2 transverse bulkheads. You had to use a little bit of pimp with the energized adaptive nano membranes and the plate. And those things all kind of the add up. And I'll kind of go into that a little bit more here in the future with some of my own fits that I use and the reason why I use hull tanks. Um, this well, we'll go with over the Gnosis next. Go, the Gnosis is something that's really common to run across anywhere in null sec, even in, in low sec, and they're fit pretty much just like this. You know, they sit either on a gate in low sec with a sensor booster to insta point you or insta scram you. Um, and null sec, these are often what you run across in like a response fleet, and all they do is they just, you know, try to micro jump drive on top of you. And, you know, Gnosis are really cheap, they're normally given out for free. New bros can sit in them because there's no uh, no ship restrictions. You basically get the max bonuses out of them, and you can get up to you know 90,000 HP if you use T2 bulkheads. And total cost is 64 million. <laughs> you know, so my like my T1 torpedo typhoon that's armor fit is 90,000 HP. So again, you have another battle cruiser that can link itself, can micro jump drive is super cheap and can get to battleship levels super easy and still be fairly difficult to kill. Uh, this next example is a Megathrone Navy issue. You don't see too many of these and they don't show up too much on the kill board mainly because again they're normally not by themselves, they're normally supported. In this case we're looking at 406,000 EHP out of this Navy Mega um, which is huge and again it's just total fitting is you know 600 mil that's just mainly because the cost of the ship is so high but the fizzings themselves is only 85 million now I don't have guns or anything like that on this because it's not really important for the discussion you know your, your total fitting will go up a little bit probably to you know 120 150 with the blasters and everything but again you know we're still looking at another ship that's going to have insane EHP from very simple fitting that's still relatively cheap compared to an armor variant and if I go in here and actually bring up my armor variant of this again I actually did spend some time you know putting on pimp and stuff like that for this just to see what I could get it up to it takes 290 it gets to 290,000 EHP with this armor setup and then when we include links 356,000 EHP so basically with everything maxed out you know maybe with a couple things here and there for optimization we're looking at 360 maybe 370,000 EHP granted you could add in slaves but again let's look at a cost comparison here right now before even adding guns or anything else this is strictly tank we're at 2.5 billion is for this entire fit or 2 billion just for the fittings um, you know if you add in slaves or amulets or whatever they're called now you then go up another you know 2 billion so you're looking at a 4 billion isk fit 
just to get comparable or better stats than this, uh, you know, 90 million in, in modules. <laughs> and one other thing that I haven't added here is the Abyssal Damage Control. You can roll these Abyssal Damage Controls with decayed mutoplasmids super easy and super cheap like I do them myself on my on my battleships and it's really not that hard to get a, a, a T2 damage control with an extra two or three percent in this case I just put one on here that had an extra two percent and it, I think it was like 399,000 EHP and it took it up to 406 so these things like this have a big effect on these ships when they're bulkhead fit um, last thing here which I ran across this pretty recently and I thought it was kind of funny uh, was a bulkhead fit nester and the nester is a armor bonus battleship where it has an armor resistance but if you throw on bulkheads on this thing you get 251,000 EHP again this is all tech 2 there's no abyssal fits or anything like that and then I went with an armor fit again putting some isk into it just to see what it would take to get close to those numbers and we're at 248,000 which is pretty comparable to the whole tank but again it costs 725, 723 million isk compared to the 85 million isk so there's a big cost discrepancy here between these values and again this factors more into how these fits are being used not in the way that people think hell tanking should be which is oh well you can't rep them so that's why you get a lot of EHP out of them again that's that's not how they're being used they're being used as response response ships um, things that you just can't kill in time to get away and a lot of you may you know not really care because you're like well you know it's fine I'm not gonna try and just ram into a, a nester with 250,000 EHP or a 400,000 EHP megathrone but you know, a lot of people talk about how they don't want people to kite and they're tired of people kiting. Well, when you brawl, this is the stuff that you run into. And since I brawl a lot, this is the stuff I have to be aware of and I have to fight. So if CCP really wants to buff brawling, they need to address hull tanking. Um, and, you know, address mainly the problem ships. You know, if, if we can't get a, a more widespread nerf or tweak to hull tanks then focus on the problem ships like the brutix navy issue and maybe the the mega navy issue um you know yeah i know galente's uh f flavor is hull tank to an extent but you know there's there should be a little bit more diverse diversity um both of their their navy ships the megathrone navy and the dominix navy both always seem to be fit with max hull tank just because people like to see those big numbers and then you know when I see one of those on dscan I'm just not going to fight you because there's, there's no point there's, I'm not going to survive long enough to chew through 450,000 EHP or 400,000 EHP so that's just kind of the general idea here with whole tanks um, or some of my complaints with whole tanks just interacting with them but the other side of this is you know my own fits like my navy raven issue this is what i've flown for many years and after the recent buffs i think we went from 110,000 is what it used to be and now we're at 121,000 hp and the only reason i fly it like this is because a shield fit either gives much less ehp or it's a lot more expensive and I believe this is my shield fit I've been working on for a while. So yeah, here's my shield fit. Uh, the one that I'd like to fly, but I don't really want to spend, you know, almost a billion isk and fittings on it to, to fly this. Um, so my original Navy Raven used to be fit with a large shield extender and an invuln. Well, large shield extenders suck on battleships, so I'm trying to squeeze in an XLASB, but I run out of CPU. So now I have to start like using the Storyline or Cosmos Scram. I have to use a Domination Grappler, Domination Painter, go with the Dread Gris's co-processor. You know, a lot of tweaking of things to try and get this fit. And again, we're lo looking at you know 330 million just in fittings on the shield fit, and then for the whole fit, 138 million. So you know, almost double the fitting or double the price to get the shield version to fit. 
and technically I'm losing a little bit of application. So, uh, you know, again, just one of the examples of why this is aggravating. I think a, a, another good example is the Typhoon fleet issue. Again, we have my hold. This is what I've been using for the past several years. 117,000 EHP. The main reason I switched from armor to holes so I could fit two heavy newts. Well, when we look at my armor variant, to get two heavy newts on an armor variant, you have to use Dread Garissa's torpedo launchers. You have to pimp the Scram, the Grappler, the Painter. Um, you have to use... Uh, well, these... Yeah, you have to use the adaptive nanoplatings because they don't take any CPU. Uh, in this case, so I think I actually have high grades on right now, so let me turn these off. We're at 125,000 EHP. So you using all this pimp here, which fittings alone is 851 million, the total fit is 1.2 billion. So we have a 1.2, 1.3 billion isk Typhoon fleet issue to get comparable EHP and utility by getting these dual heavy newts in compared to a 560 million isk total Typhoon fleet issue. Uh, you know, again, that's that's kind of the issues that I see with um, why whole tanking is becoming so prevalent, because you can get the same performance out of a whole tank with less money or less isk and better utility com to a comparative like you know armor fit or shield fit depending on the ship, and it's slowly just becoming where every ship you run across now is some whole tank monstrosity that you just can't kill in time, especially if you're doing like a, a brawler fit. So, kind of wrapping up this video, I know this has been going on for a while, so I wanted to, um, you know, just put in some closing comments here. As far as whole tanking goes, there, there will be different different people saying different things for how to address it. You know, some will say it's perfectly fine how it is, uh, which, if we want to go that route, again, I think there are very specific ships that could use some tweaking, to so just so they're not quite so overpowered. I think the Brudix Navy issue is probably the primary one. Um, Megathron Navy is really crazy for EHP, but because at least it's a battleship, and it can't link itself and stuff like that, maybe it's okay. Uh, out of all of this, if anything, the Brutix Navy issue, I'd say, definitely needs some kind of tweak. But I'd rather see a more holistic approach to it, mainly with ha adding stacking penalties to uh, at least the l low slot bulkheads or the rigs. Uh, maybe, maybe just stacking penalties on the rigs by themselves. That way you're not nerfing freighters, because I know freighters use bulkheads. Um, but that way, uh, and also freighters don't have rigs, so this would only affect combat ships, but just some way to help bring down the maximum EHP of hull tanks, so that they're not always the best option or the only fit for certain ships, um, just to, to increase variety a little bit. Because right now, hull tanks have three things going on for them. They have great, you know, price per performance, they have low fitting requirements, you know, added utility, and huge EHP numbers normally exceeding that of a standard tanked ship of you know armor shield variants so I think we can address you know one of those items we can't really address cost so we can kind of knock that off so you're left with just pretty much tank and utility so we can't really address utility on its own and I think that's important for whole tanks to retain um, that should be the benefit. That, I think that should be the primary benefit of going whole tank is that you gain more utility because you free up all your mids. But in combination with all that utility, I don't think you should be able to achieve such you know high tanking numbers. Um, you know I think there should be some kind of standard of you know like if the ship is you know armor uh, is an armor focused ship and you t and you put T2 armor. Um, you know, T2 armor fit on it, you know, with no pimp or anything like that, then maybe whole tank should be a certain percentage higher than that fit, um, just as like a general rule of thumb. Uh, but again, that, that's kind of really getting into a lot of unnecessary details, 
I just think in general the whole tank modules, either the bulkheads or the bulkhead rigs, need to start having some kind of stacking penalty. That way we can reduce the total EHP of some of these fits. And even, you know, if they do go max bulkhead, they'll still bring down their, their effective hit points. But it might also open those fits up a little bit more to where, okay, well, it's not worth stacking eight bulkheads or seven bulkheads anymore. Let's just go with, you know, four or five bulkheads and then, you know, whatever else. Um, so at least that kind of gives a little bit more variety to the fits along with reducing their total EHP. So that's kind of some things that have been I've been talking a lot about in various discords, um, trying to get information from other people, how they feel about it. And, you know, for the most part, a lot of people are tired of dealing with whole tanks. There's a couple that feel that it's normal. Um, so just wanted to put this out there to get everyone's opinion. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here as it's drawn on a lot longer than I originally intent. But there was a lot to talk about. So see you later.